Hi, I'm Lea van der Vinden. I'm curator at the Royal Picture Gallery Mauritshuis in The Hague in the Netherlands. And I'm exhibition curator of George Stubbs' The Man, The Horse, The Obsession. The first exhibition in the Netherlands on George Stubbs, but unfortunately it had to close after only having been open for three weeks because of the coronavirus. Therefore, I'm so happy to have been invited to do this Q&A for Paard Verzamel to talk about this exhibition, which is, of course, very dear to me. Of course, it's truly a pity to have all those beautiful masterpieces by George Stubbs, including Whistle Jacket from the National Gallery at the Mauritshuis House for no one to see. And of course, I also hope that in the near future, there will be an opportunity for people to see the exhibition in the end. But honestly, I really don't know if that will be possible. We'll have to see. But in the meantime, we're working on a 3D visualization of the entire exhibition space with the possibility to zoom in on through the paintings and read texts and also uh, I'm doing short lectures on masterpieces from the exhibition which are being posted on the Facebook and Instagram pages of the Mauritshuis Museum every Monday. So stay tuned for that. George Stubbs mostly did commissions uh, for horse owners to paint portraits of individual horses. And therefore, of course, it doesn't seem that likely to see the same horse or even the same couple of horses in several paintings. But it's true, it did happen. And with this specific painting, we're talking about the mares and falls before a unfigured uh, background, uh, which George Stubbs did for Lord Torrington. And then a few years later, he painted three of those mares and two falls in a landscape for someone else, for the Viscount Middleton. And this Viscount, uh, he also was a horse owner, uh, so it would have made sense if Stubbs would have painted his own horses. But when Stubbs got this commission, he, uh, the Viscount was uh, redoing or mostly rebuilding his country house. So for that reason, maybe the commission went a bit different from what George Stubbs was used to. The painting was also not uh, framed and hung uh, in the rooms of the country house of the Viscount, but it was part of the decoration, it was uh, a part of the framework, uh, the wooden decoration in a room, and it probably hung above a door, so it would be a door piece. And therefore, in this specific case, it did happen that George Stubbs paint the horses from Lord Torrington for a painting that was in the house of someone completely different. Something which Stubbs also did was that he made a lot of studies, uh, drawings probably, most of them uh, have been lost, uh, but also oil sketches which he uh, kept in a studio and could use later on. And there's also an in instance of that in the exhibition. Uh, it's the old study of Eclipse, uh, which Stubbs used later on for several paintings for different owners of the horse and also later on in the 1790s for a series of famous racehorses from different ages. So that's also uh, an instance in which Stubbs uh, painted the same horse several times. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, when we're talking about stops, uh, it's, it's all about Enlightenment era. It's this perfect combination of art and science, natural science in his life and career. And this already started at a young age. Uh, we know from his memoirs that already as a child, Stubbs did a lot of drawing and was also interested in skeletons, uh, skeletons of animals, which he used to draw. And then later on, he started making paintings of people and he also started to get classes in a hospital to get to really know uh, anatomy, mostly the anatomy of people. So from a very young age, he was always fascinated, obsessed by art and anatomy and natural, nat natural science. Uh, it is interesting that he started to focus on horses and this was probably because he already uh, got his commissions from the wealthy people, the aristocracy wanted him to do their portraits and a lot of these British aristocrats also owned horses. Uh, United Kingdom, England of course is a horse loving nation. And that's probably the main reason why George Stubbs started to very much focus on the horse and even to start this unbelievable endeavor to make this scientifically accurate, this scientific publication on the anatomy of the horse. But he was also indeed interested in the anatomy of other animals, especially exotic species, which were collected by aristocrats, but also by scientists in England. And we know uh, that at the end of his life and career that he started to do a comparative anatomy, uh, comparing the anatomy of a human, a man, uh, a common fowl, a chicken, and a tiger. And that he also worked on uh, dissection himself. So he also works on different kinds of uh, animals, uh, not exclusively horses, but of course his horse portraits and his knowledge, his fast knowledge of horse anatomy were the main reason why George Stubbs became such an important artist. Yes, of course, uh, Whistle Jacket is, has become such a famous and iconic painting because of this unfigured uh, background. Uh, there's nothing that distracts from the horse, and also no saddle or brittles. Which is, of course, interesting because the story goes that Stubbs originally was commissioned by Lord Torrington to paint an equestrian portrait of King George III. Uh, the idea was that Stubbs would paint the horse, that a portrait painter would do the portraits of the king, and a landscape specialist would do the background. And then in the end it was decided that the painting should stay the way it was after George Stubbs only did the horse, because it was so impactful. Uh, still it's a bit strange because when you know uh, there are a lot of artists uh, that have been collaborating uh, this happened a lot and it would have made sense for Stubbs to already leave out an empty space for the saddle for instance and he didn't. The National Gallery did research, uh, scientific research on uh, the paint layers and if there ever had been something there or something missing to indicate that original there was a blank space for a saddle but there wasn't. So of course it was possible that uh, Stubbs just didn't leave out an empty space and uh, he thought that the other painter should have been doing this or maybe the story about the equestrian portrait isn't entirely true. And perhaps it was uh, meant uh, that there would have been a landscape in the background, but not a rider. Uh, which, in fact, 
is suggested by the fact that there isn't a saddle or even a blank space originally for a saddle to be painted in. We really don't know and it's one of those mysteries about this iconic masterpiece which in my opinion only makes it even more intriguing. Yes, a lot of you had questions about shipping and of course I know this is an intriguing subject but because of safety issues uh, for us sh shipping of artwork is completely confidential so I'm so sorry but I can't say anything about that. I can say something more about the process of making an exhibition. Of course this is a team effort, I'm not doing this alone, no way. Especially in terms of the design of the exhibition, uh, we have worked with a design team, Koolhorst in Veld, and they did this, this very beautiful design of the exhibition with this corrugated sheets, steel sheets, uh, which were felted, are felted, uh, and uh, also this design with those small walls in between the paintings. Uh, the exhibition space has uh, it consisted uh, consists of a large uh, rectangular space, and of course, from the beginning, it made complete sense to have whistle jacket at the end of it on this most monumental uh, space in the whole room, and to have the anatomy drawings and the skeleton of the eclipse in the round space. Uh, for me it was also important, uh, for me as the exhibition curator, to have the copies of the book of the publication by Stubbs, The Anatomy of the Horse, right next to the skeleton, so people could make uh, comparisons uh, with the actual skeleton and Stubbs' etchings and also his drawings of skeletons and of the musculature of horses so you can make a direct comparison. And also with the grouping of paintings in the exhibition of course I have made uh, decisions that specific paintings should be hung together and then there's a first design and we look at that all together with the project group and we make changes. So uh, it's all a team effort uh, to make such an exhibition work. Thank you.